Teddy Hart documentary. I didn't send you the link to this, so I'm sorry about that, but I'm pretty much going to fill you in with it. Uh, for Peacock... Uh, folks, folks, you see what I deal with here? Yeah, I know, the unprofessional, I tell you. I... I uh, is called Crimes, Cons, Cats. Now, I don't know how much time you spent with Teddy, uh, if any, but uh, essentially the reality show was originally going to be a reality show. This guy was following around filming him as his life of breeding cats and wrestling on independence and stuff. And then over the <laughs> course of months and years, it gets darker and darker. He talks to a number of Ted's ex-partners. And they don't have flattering things to say about him. He gets into the prostitution business. He becomes a pimp. Um, And then he's also been accused of killing an ex-girlfriend called Samantha Fiddler, who's not been seen in five years. Mm. Okay, my association with Teddy Hart was at TNA. And I have a story to go along with this. This is story time with Dutch, right? Absolutely. So... We have the matches. We, t- we just taped on Wednesday nights. And, of course, we had – it was catered. But before we got a like a, a, a cater, we didn't get a regular caterer. There was a restaurant at the bottom of the hill that was like a little cafe. And it was called the Redneck Cafe. That was the name of it. So we would walk down the, how, uh, the hill from the Nashville Fairgrounds to eat. So one day I went down there to eat <clears throat> and Teddy Hart was in the, in, in the territory and CM Punk was in the territory too. Not for long, but they got into a fight. I didn't see the fight, but they tell me that Teddy Hart handed CM Punk his ass on a plate and gave it back to him which means he got two or three quick punches in, boom, 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 and it was over. So the word I got, I didn't see it. The word I got was that damn Teddy Hart just beat up CM Punk, and they were arguing about something at the restaurant after I, after I had left, and it happened outside the restaurant, I guess. But which was a, a strange story, and I think CM Punk, he had a little bruise over his eye or something. Not enough to be noticeable. Whether that's true or not, I'm not going to verify, but that's what I heard. Now, Teddy, was he was crazy. He was even crazy then. We did a match there, I forgot, where they just beat the living crap out of him. And he's supposed to lay there and sell? Well... When some of his baby face buddies run in the ring to save him, right? And all the heels ran off. Hell, see, uh, Teddy got up and was doing this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not hurt. Hey, you know, cheer me, cheer me. And he would get there late. He'd be messed up. I think we used him twice because he was so unpredictable that we didn't know what he was going to do. I didn't deal with him that much, and I'm glad because I wouldn't have known what to do with him. But I think he made about two times. But these other things you're telling me about, like the girlfriend missing, presumed dead, that's all news for me. But what, what do I doubt it? No, not really. Because Teddy, he is so different than Brett. Whose son is he? Ah, right. His real name's Teddy Annis. So it's BJ Annis and one of the sisters, obviously. Uh, so it's, it's, it's one of Brett's sisters uh, who's the mother. Well, well, they say every family has one. Well, Teddy is the heart's contribution to that statement. It is Teddy, because I've seen bits and bobs of him over the years. He's obviously a really talented wrestler. It's, I'm trying to think of anyone else who got in their own way more than Ted did as far as career advancement. Well, they several, but I don't think as it, Ted, Teddy was a great athlete. I mean, he was really, really good. And to think back on what he could have accomplished if he'd just been presentable. He could probably still work half messed up and do better than a lot of guys straight. 
But he looked at life differently. People look at life differently. And he didn't want to, I guess he saw what wrestling had, had, had uh, done to his family. What year did Owen Hart die? 1999. Okay. And Ted was in the WWF's uh, Nascence development system before then. He was in like when he was 16 or something. Well, he was one of those loner guys, I think, that didn't want to be told what to do. He didn't want to be saddled. He didn't want to have responsibilities. And so he made sure nobody gave him any responsibilities because he was so <laughs> irresponsible. And, we, and when you do something with somebody, you do an angle, you expect that guy to follow the, follow the story. There was no guarantee he would follow the story. There was no guarantee he would even uh, tell him what to say, whether he'd go out there and even hit, even hit, even around it. He may tell a story. He had a flat tire on the way to the uh, way to the gym that day, but who knows what he was going to do? He was uh, just unpredictable, and you just couldn't trust him enough to use him. <laughs> 